Hi, I'm Spencer Brandt, and I'm filling in for your regularly scheduled host, Steve Osman. This is Split the Party. I'm here with my guests, Josh Van Haver and Steve King. Today, we are talking about the DC Cinematic Universe. Before we get too deep down that rabbit hole, though, I really want to mention The Flash. If you have not been watching it, you really should. It's one of the best shows, not only just superhero shows, just one of the best shows on TV. Yeah, and you just need to tell them why, please. Well, mainly it is, we finally got to see some really awesome stuff this last episode. I mean, I'll just cut to the end, though. The best part was they brought in Gorilla Grodd, finally. They've been teasing him since the very first episode. We got, finally got to see him, telepathic powers and everything. Like, and this is a t basic cable show, and it looked almost movie-ready quality for the way Grodd looked. It was freaking amazing. And they're just, they're doing something that's just so extreme. They're doing a talking, telepathic, super-intelligent gorilla. They're putting him on basic cable and going, hey, uh, DC Cinematic Universe, your move. So was, I know you haven't watched any of The Flash, right? No, nope, not yet. But telling you that Gorilla Grodd is on television? I am all about it now. I'm going to make sure I get to see all this stuff that's out there because... Binge watch. Yeah. Gorilla Grodd is amazing. He's one of my favorite villains of The Flash, so I can't wait to see this. So if, if the television universe is willing to do such an extreme, not to mention Gorilla Grodd, they also did Firestorm, and they did Firestorm completely accurate. It's fantastic. But if the TV shows are willing to do this, then... DC Cinematic Universe. You got Batman, Superman coming out March 26, 2016. They got to step up their game, right? Pretty much, yes. Big time. They're going to have to start pulling in the bigger villains. You got to pull in Brainiac. And I, the rumor is that Doomsday is supposed to be maybe teased in this, maybe not. I don't know. But the, these bigger villains are going to be amazing. I mean, an intergalactic god that shoots tracking lasers from his eyes. I need to see this. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I so can't wait. We just, um, I'm sure everybody that's even watching this has already seen. We got the first appearance of Aquaman, and he looks fantastic, right? Right. He does look really cool. He's he still needs to be missing a hand. Aquaman <laughs> to me. But I mean, he's yeah, it looks cool, but only time will tell if Jason Momoa does the role justice. So we'll just see how that goes. Which Superman, Batman, Dawn of Justice? <laughs> um, if you haven't, you know, obviously you've heard of this. It's one of the biggest franchises up or upcoming, I guess I should say, because there's only Man of Steel out, but Superman, Batman, Dawn of Justice is really what is going to kick off the DC Cinematic Universe as a whole. Um, Man of Steel, like it or not, it could have just ended right there and we could have just had a Superman movie where Superman actually fights somebody. But Batman, Superman is what really is going to kick off the DC Universe as a whole, right? Yeah, and they've got the rumors that Bruce Wayne was coming to Metropolis at the very end and he showed up. Like, they're talking he'll be a flashback of him being yeah. there at the fight with Zod. Oh, so running and, around as the city crumbles. Yeah, yeah. and him showing up because he's going. he was off to do some work with LexCorp, talk to them about maybe teaming up or whatever, and then all of this is going on. And then one of the first scenes that we know that they filmed for uh, Batman vs. Superman is the football, the football. game, yeah. the Metropolis versus Gotham, and that's where we're supposedly going to get Cyborg first because he was an all-star football player in his prime. They, got mangled up and they turn him into cyborg. Now, do you think, uh, speaking of the, the flashback, do you think Batman Superman is going to actually have, because it's rumored to have every member of the Justice League movie making an appearance here. So fan speculation, yeah, you could have yeah. him show up, but is he going to get blown up or cut in half or something happen to him in this movie or are they going to save that for down the line? What do you think? Uh, I think it's going to be this movie. I think yeah. that's what it is. They're going to tease him getting mangled up and like, after credits or whatever yeah. they decide to do, you'll see him being put back together. Which would be pretty cool. Yeah. He'll be on his way to at least be in Cyborg, if not Cyborg by the end of the film. Um, you were mentioning earlier, because uh, I mean, honestly, in a movie like this where it's supposed to be, I mean, title, Batman, Superman, but you're supposed to bring in the entire Justice League, how can you bring in a character like Aquaman? Uh, the biggest rumor I heard for, was the first rumor, which is the whole incident in Man of Steel with the machine in the, the ocean. Again, yeah, yeah, it angered Aquaman because it did something to Atlantis, so he comes up because he's very unpleased. That was a big rumor, and like that was like six months ago. Whether that'll hold up, who knows? I mean, technically, if you go to IMBD, like Jason Momoa, it says Arthur Curry slash Aquaman. Will we get just Aquaman, or will we show up as Arthur Curry? I mean, like. The look we saw, I don't he, see Arthur Curry. He looks Curry. like the yeah. king of Atlanta. I don't yeah. see no Arthur Curry and it's in the really, look we saw. Yeah, especially with that, I mean, even just looking at the picture we've seen, it's really hard. They can't really do an Aquaman origin in this because from the looks of it, he's the king. Yeah. He's yeah. Not, There's no time. If they're going to introduce all of these characters, they're not going to do 
a splash of origin stories. They're just going to be, this is the king of Atlantis, and he's now here because he's pissed. So Same with, like, Wonder Woman. I mean, Amazonian princess, obviously, possibly even running along the lines of whatever what Zod did would make a decent idea as to why Wonder Woman would show up in the mainland and that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, we have the images of her and her outfit, too, so we know she's already Wonder Woman. I mean, and she's, she's going to yeah. be established as well. And my hope is that we're going to show up a Green Lantern. I'm hoping for Kyle because he's one of my favorites because I would really like to jump over <laughs> Jon Stewart. But yeah, they might Kyle. jump that way, but... Yeah, it, it, it's a tough call to say, but... Um, so after Batman, Superman, Dawn of Justice, we have the next big movie in the DC Cinematic Universe, and as much as it pains me to say, Suicide Squad. And I know you're ecstatic about this movie. Yeah, I, I do love the villains, because in, in my personal opinion, the villains are what make the DC Universe. And then they're giving all of these, turning them into anti-heroes, but all these villains that, hey, here you go, we're going to put you on a team and go save the day for us, because... Apparently, we don't want these other heroes to do it. So you go do the dirty work for us. And we've got big names like we got Will Smith playing Deadshot and Jared Leto playing the Joker, which obviously big big shoes to fill. Yep. I mean, every person mm -hmm. that's played the Joker has been excessively memorable in their own right. A lot of problems with that though, because the Joker has never been a part of the Suicide Squad. So what do you think? How do you, how do you think they're going to fit him into something like this? That's the role like I'm most excited for and least excited for. Like when I heard they're gonna put Joker in the Suicide Squad, I was like, well, he's never been a member. But I'm really, really excited to see Jared Leto play the Joker. I think he's gonna bring something fresh and new to the role in a very good way. You think they're gonna do a little bit more of the the comic -y evil, or you think they're gonna do a little bit of the Heath Ledger where he's just, I mean. He's a clown. Well, he but did stabby, just stabby. make a recent comment where he's always seen the Joker like a Shakespeare type play and very theatric. Very theatric, which I agree with him. I like the sound of that. So I think there's gonna be like almost a comedic drama to him. We'll just see what Jared Leto can do with the role. So we've got we got Deadshot, which he's a pretty pretty famous villain among all of DC. He's fought everybody here and there. You've got the Joker. Everybody knows the Joker. Uh, Harley Quinn, her first big on-screen appearance, which is something a lot of people are excited for. But the really, the really odd one about Suicide Squad is the inclusion of Enchantress. That's something that no one has ever done before. Enchantress is a magic-based supervillain. So what do you guys think that means for DC as a whole? I think it means that they're going to open up to everything that DC has, because we know The Rock is already cast as Black Adam, Shazam, whatever they're going with. I'm, I know he's going to wind up being Black Adam, but if he starts off as Shazam, that's okay too, because that's where Black Adam started, but that's a magic character as well. And now you have Superman as the superpowers, and you've got Shazam, which is the magic aspect, which I'm really excited for this, like pulling all of the aspects of the comic book verse into the movies, and it's going to be great. So I've got to ask then, what are you guys more excited for? Batman versus Superman, hands down. <laughs> Suicide Squad, because I don't need to see more of the super bland heroes. I want to see the villains. Batman's I just want Batfleck. Batman's going to beat up Superman. It's going to happen. <laughs> we need to see this on film, and you know it's true. Anyway, I think we're about out of time for today. I'd like to thank our sponsors, uh, Dual Bus Design, Excelsior Games and Comics, and Sound G Entertainment. And I'll see you guys in the Nerdverse.